The moment ICU nurse Birgit Umaigba woke up today, she knew she couldn't go in. I had to take this day off because I am exhausted. Now we're starting to see um, two patients to one nurse, even three patients sometimes, so it's really getting scary. Over the course of the pandemic, Ontario's ICUs have never had as many COVID patients as they do right now. And doctors are bracing for it to get much worse. A real possibility that in a few weeks from now, we're going to be in a situation where we don't have ICU beds. And that is Again. sort of the, the scariest situation that we can envision. That scary situation has now prompted an emergency break. Effective Saturday, the whole province will enter a month-long lockdown. Restaurants will close for on-site dining once again. No more patios for now. Same goes for hair and nail salons and gyms. And for parents whose children have spent the pandemic ping-ponging between openings and closures, now worry that schools will close too. Something some schools in Toronto have already been hinting at. We like consistency. We, we don't like going back and forth again and again. But for healthcare workers, this is a dream come true. We take one step forward and we take so many steps backwards. So, yeah, th there should be a province-wide lockdown as of right now. And on Saturday, this exhausted ICU nurse will finally get what she's been waiting for. Okay, so Katie, we now have a sense of what is closed, but what, what's going to be open over the next month? Right, so your essential retail, that is going to be remaining open at 50% capacity. That's your grocery stores, your drug stores, um, and other retail will remain open at 25% capacity. If you like to golf, good news for you, you continue doing that. Uh, religious services will be able to continue with limited capacities. We also know uh, that construction, that business is not going to slow down. That will continue, Adrian. Okay, Katie Nicholson, thank you. You're welcome. And let's turn now to infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Suman Chakrabarty. So uh, fitness and personal care closed, retail open, reduced capacity, you just heard it, schools potentially still a go. Does all of this go the distance? You know, I, I think that it's certainly going to uh, decrease the numbers, but what I didn't hear anything of yet is anything about essential workers. And I think this is where the bulk of our infections are coming from, them and also in their households. So I really hope to have some type of intervention to help the cases in terms of the growth from that area of the population. Because let's, let's underline your, your bottom line here. The, the consequence of not going far enough is what? Well, listen, uh, the, the growth that we're at right now will overwhelm the ICU, overwhelm hospitals' ability to look after critical patients. This is something we really want to avoid, especially having to pull back on things like essential surgeries. You know, so this is something that we really don't want to get to. Hopefully things do improve, and at least partially addressing the, the drivers of this transmission will definitely help with that. In your mind, schools a key driver of that transmission? School, I, I want to keep open for as long as I can. At some point, you have to close them if things get uh, really bad. But they're not certainly a strong driver of transmission, as you see with other areas. Like I said, with things like factories, food processing plants, they're at a high uh, concentration here, especially in my region in Peel. Very good to get your insights. Dr. Suman Chakrabarty, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Take care.